Hey, Vlad here, DevInsideD.com. Welcome to another video. In a previous video, we wrote a credit card validator and generator. And in this video, we're going to learn how to professionally automatically test it with a library called Scala Test. So let's get right to it. As always, we're in the Ubuntu virtual machine and this time we have Sublime on the top and the terminal at the bottom. This is how we left off in the previous video. So we have a project, um, simple one. Uh, we didn't really change the build, uh, build file at all or the uh, properties file uh, where we specify the, the SPT version. So we're still using the same SPT version. Uh, we have a tiny, uh, tiny build file and um, uh, we have our credit card and we have a tiny main method which is running over here uh, which just displays um, a valid credit card number and an invalid credit card number and also uh, some extra information so uh, there is no way in hell that we can keep using those main methods for um, for proper uh, tests so uh, we're in the beginning of the series for for collections so we're gonna uh, write quite a bit of code and uh, we, we really need something uh, we, need, we need a bigger boat we need something more professional to uh, to make sure that our code is at least doing what 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 we think it should do we're going to have dedicated videos about testing in the future uh, for now all you need to know about automatic testing is that uh, you basically create a so-called test harness uh, called the test code uh, which is there to test your so-called real code you know so-called production code so you can imagine it as as having a separate project uh, which you know has regular code but it's like you know it's, it's actually a test code and it has a dependency on your real project the goal is pretty simple actually the goal is to minimize the time required to get feedback from your production code you want to see as fast as possible and also as easily as possible so usually by a press of a button or by tapping a simple command um, you want to see as fast as possible and as easy as possible if your production code is actually doing what you think it's doing now whether tests protect you from bugs is a discussion for another video uh, for now all you need to know is how to get started we will also have videos in the future where we're going to have a basically a battle and we're going to see you know the benefits and the trade-offs of testing uh, what is clear now is that that they don't come for free they everything has a cost everything has trade-offs so uh, basically what, what you need to know now is that they don't get written by themselves right so you still have to write them so uh, you have this cost of time that you know time is a resource so you have this cost that you need to invest and um, even um, uh, there is this concept of uh, so-called uh, property tests uh, even they need to get written so property tests are, are tests that sort of generate other tests uh, but still even even them you have to write and also your your code has to be ready for uh, you know it, it, you have to have an applicable use case for property based testing but we're not going to talk about property based testing today uh, we're going to talk about uh, simple unit testing for now just uh, bear with me you know about this whole benefits and trade-offs discussion and uh, you know let's just operate under the assumption that tests are very professional and the tests are good and the tests are required there are different kinds of testing, uh, as I already mentioned, but uh, today we're just going to concentrate on unit tests, a term that I will also only define uh, loosely because remember, this is just a crash course because we're in the middle of the video, um, uh, not of the video, we're in the middle of the uh, playlist uh, for, for collections, right? So I just want to get there as fast as possible and we just really, really need to write tests uh, tests for that. So uh, unit tests are the smallest possible tests and that's 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 how I'm going to define them. So uh, usually they, they look something like a function call and uh, whatever comes back, you just make sure that it matches uh, what you expected right so you just uh, call a function and then the result of that function is called the uh, actual uh, value or the actual result and you just make sure that it matches the expected result and that's it and usually these um, uh, Test you don't have to sort of uh, you know um, write them from scratch. Usually you have uh, libraries that integrate very well with your tool chain. In, in our particular case, with SPT, so we will be able to uh, run our tests directly from SPT. As I mentioned previously, a test harness can be a completely separate project which has a dependency on our project. Uh, but in SPT, there is a, a much easier way. SPT has a notion of scopes, so everything that we put under under source main Scala, as we have been doing um, so far in this entire playlist, uh, is in the scope main. Uh, in the, in the so-called uh, main scope and everything that we put um, by default under a source test Scala that we should probably generate right now so if you go and go here we're gonna go new folder and I can do uh, test Scala All right so we have source main Scala and we're gonna have source test Scala right so everything in this scope has a dependency on that scope so if I put over here a new file and I'm gonna call it a uh, credit card and you can, usually you could call it test or tests or uh, what I prefer is to call it a suite right so it's a suite of tests right so we're gonna create it like this right so as of right now we're not gonna put anything uh, in there I just wanted to, to show you that okay there's source main Scala and there's also source test Scala uh, that I put in the 
wrong folder actually um, let me let me fix that so let me open the containing folder okay so let me cut this out and put it in source right so there's source main scala and there's source test scala right so there we go yeah this is exactly why i created the file so that i can see if you know if so that i can see easy uh, much uh, much more easily uh if i if i did this properly or not before we even start writing our test we need to uh let spt know uh which which testing library we're using and uh, there are quite a few to choose from and uh the first candidate is a scala test a library that has been out for um, you know more than 10 years probably right as of right now and this is the one that we're going to use uh, there's another one called specs 2 uh, there's another one called scala check this one is a bit different it's for as, as you can see for property based uh, testing where where test cases are basically being generated and we also have um, a rather rather new one i mean it's not that much that that, that new but you know it's still it's a relatively new um, it, it's called uh, micro test uh, over here you see it's spelled with U-test, but over here you see a microtest, and it also uh, mentioned somewhere here, pr uh, pronounced microtest, right? Uh, also a really good one. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to use Scala test. But please don't even try to find the best one. Uh, as always, as most of the times in our industry, this is just a uh, matter of preference. Uh, they're good. They're they're all you know they're all good and bad. They all have have uh, trade trade offs. So uh, just uh, pick a poison and uh, let's get moving. I already made a video about uh, Dev Wars a long time ago. I'm gonna link it over here, and uh, you know I'm gonna mention it almost you know. Every time I'm gonna, I'm gonna start introducing some libraries, I'm gonna mention this video, and eventually this is gonna be the most watched video um, ever, <laughs> right? Anyway, so uh, we're gonna use Scala Test uh, because I believe it's uh, it's very easy to get started with, and also it's the one that I have been using um, um, in in my most projects, so I'm, I'm mo mo most um, most familiar with with Scala Test, and this is why we're gonna use Scala Test, which is pretty much the only the only two reasons. So it's not like you know better than anything else or or whatever. Okay, so uh, let's start using it. If we go back to the uh, to the website over here, uh, and if we go to install over here, right, then uh, we're gonna see a bunch of instructions. There's step one, step two, step three. Uh, step two is just a recommendation, and and so on. So by the end of this video, we're gonna do all of them. But as of right now, uh, we need to uh, look only at these two lines. So um, we need just to add. All we need to do is we need to take this line and we need to put it in our in our build file. And the thing is that. Um, why you see here two lines is actually it's actually two libraries that some one tiny part of Scala test was actually useful for people to you know also also to it was also useful in production code so uh, eventually you know it grew out uh, in its own tiny thing and over here it's just recommended to use it but we're not going to use it uh, at all in this video so we're just gonna copy this line and we're gonna go back to our build file which is over here and we're just gonna literally paste it over here now um, we did something like this already in the past where we defined our own libraries who publish them locally so how this works is that um, somewhere on the internet there are publicly accessible repositories so sbt knows uh, there is a co this concept of resolvers uh, um, and, and a resolver describes where resources can be downloaded from and by default it, it knows about this uh, main one called um, maven central right so um, it sbt will go to maven, maven central it will find try to find an artifact uh, which is called org.scala test uh, which is which is the uh, artifact uh, group I believe right and um, then because we're using two of these it will uh, look for an artifact called Scala test underscore uh, our Scala version uh, so it's gonna do this underscore Scala 212 so if we do this we actually don't need this but SPT will inject this 212 automatically for us and this is going to be the version and this will make sure that uh, it only uh, is part of the of the test scope right so if we remove this then it will also be um, valid in, in the in the regular main scope uh, which is nothing like you know terrible everything is still gonna work uh, but usually if you, you know if you deploy this as a library you don't want to deploy you know you don't want you don't want to you want you want to you want to keep it small you want to you know put extra dependencies that, that are uh, unnecessary so you have to be always really careful with the dependencies because remember uh, writing writing a program is much easier than maintaining a program right so try to minimize your dependencies right so uh, this will allow SBT to download a test library I believe if you reload the project now uh, then we actually won't see any changes unless you know we made a mistake uh, only when we're actually trying to to run our tests only then uh, we will actually see uh, some problems so if we do test okay not some problems but you know it doesn't have anything to test but uh, if we had actually hold on did you save the file I think I didn't sublime confuses me sometimes okay I didn't save the file okay hold up reload 
All right, and I'll test. Yeah, so this is the point where it starts to download uh, download the library. So what it, what it did now, it's, it, it downloaded the library, right? So it found it, and as you can see, it's over here on the org Scala test because of this, right? And it says Scala test because of that, and it says Scala test underscore 212. Um, I'm sorry, I was showing it um, the wrong way. So or, or Scala test because of these two, and Scala test underscore 212 because of 212 is coming because of the second one over here. This is the version 305, and this has nothing to do with Maven. This is a pure SPT thing. So it downloaded this jar, and uh, it, it tried to run our test, but there were no actually tests. It says no tests were executed, right? Uh, so it says run completed in 28 milliseconds, total number of tests run zero, suites zero, aborted zero, tests succeeded, failed, canceled, ignored, and pending are all zero. Before I explain to you how the how, how the test command works, uh, let's actually go back to the Scala, um, Scala test website and go to quick start. I'm um, sorry, go to user guide and uh, go to uh, selecting testing style. So as I already mentioned, there are different kinds of testing out there. Um, and um, this library in particular, Scala Test, uh, offers a bunch of them. It offers the, this style, this style, this style, and so on and so on and so on. And if you can see there, they're a little bit different. So the one that, you know, you can, you can take a look at them uh, at your own pace. But um, the one that, that I find most useful is, is this very first one. It's very, very simple. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy that. And we're going to go to our credit card suite. Just gonna paste it in. Uh, I don't know whether it's an empty line over here. And also in the boards, org scala test .font suite, which is this one, right? So um, we're gonna use an underscore because we're gonna keep importing stuff. So basically test suites are regular classes, right? That extend something from, from a testing library. This is very, very typical. I'm gonna explain the rest in, in a second, right? So if I save that, run the tests, then we actually see a green uh, unit test. So what we see is the name of the suite, the set suite over here. Um, we, we see these strings, right? And they're green because the test passed, right? Uh, and it says total number of tests, two. Suites completed one, right? This is the one, one suite. And um, both of them, both of them succeeded. Right, Not, nothing failed, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing canceled, nothing ignored, nothing pending. So uh, every time we type in compile, uh, what actually happens is that there is an alias that does actually this. It says, okay, go into the main scope, which is also called compile, and run the compile command. So this is exactly the same thing as just saying compile, and this is exactly the same thing as just saying run. See, compile run is exactly the same thing as saying run. So for the test, we can do the same thing. We can do test compile, right? So we're compiling the test. And um, we can also do test, colon test. And as, as I said before, test is just an alias for test, te uh, test, test. And we can also do test that run, right? So we, if we had a main method in the, in the test scope, then it would also, also run. What we can't do is we can't go to the compile scope and do test over there because as BT says, no such setting uh, task. Okay, but as of right now, because it's you know a regular command, we can do tilde test, right? And every time we change something, it will actually you know recompile and rerun the test. So let me just press enter, save the file. It's going to recompile, rerun the test, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's talk about this. So uh, this is, as I said, a test suite. So we can have uh, two of them, right? So Scala is not going to allow us to have it, uh, you know, with the same name. So we have to call it uh, set suite two because otherwise it's not going to compile. And then it's going to run both of them. It's going to say, okay, I ran you know two suites, uh, but in total you know four tests, all of them succeeded right so uh, let me remove the second one I just wanted to show you how it works with multiple suites and usually you know every suite is in, in is in its own file and usually you would test like you know a, a small functionality at least at least for for unit tests the next thing that we're going to do is actually let me throw these out so the way it works was the, was the fun suite as it is that you have a function called test and it is a current function so it has two parameter lists and in Scala uh, if the second parameter you know if, if a parameter list uh, has only one parameter then you can uh, replace the parentheses with curly bra braces so this is basically how you define test. Over here, you have the name of the test, right? So we're gonna have first one, right? And over here, you have the functionality of the test, right? So you can do print line, uh, first one, right? And it's actually going to do, you know, it's gonna do print line first one, and it's gonna run first one. So we obviously can't have um, the same one defined twice, right? So we can't have uh, first one again, doesn't matter what, what, what the code is actually doing. Uh, so it can't be verified at compile time, right? It screens, but you see that the entire set suite was aborted. Right, so look, no tests ran, so it so it's not like some tests failed. The entire test suite was aborted because this is something, um, you know, something that is not expected. Right, so you always have to call them differently. Right, so first one and second one. Okay, so let me remove the second one. Uh, also, let me let me have a bit more space. Okay, so um, as of right now, we have only seen passing unit tests. So let's actually demonstrate uh, one that is um, that is um, failing. Uh, so we're gonna have this one, and we're gonna say test. 
success, right? And we're just not going to have anything over here, right? So this is a test success. Uh, the next one is going to be a failure. Test failure. And if you want to make sure that the test fails, all you need to do is to throw an exception, right? So we're just going to do a throw new exception like this, right? So every time a test uh, throws an exception, then it will fail. So you see, you see succeeded one, failed, failed one. And if I go up, it will say, okay, so test success actually succeeded and test failure failed uh, with this Java long exception. Let me actually comment this one out a little bit. Um, what, what usually happens is that you have a suite of tests, which is like, I don't know, 20 tests in there, and then uh, you know something something goes wrong and one of them is failing. So what you might want to do occasionally is to replace the test method with ignore method. Right, uh, because you know maybe right now you want to concentrate on your task, and you're going to fix this one a bit later. Uh, so you're going to go ignore. Uh, we're going to call this one ignore just to demonstrate this. And it doesn't really matter what's going to happen here. Right? So this this code is not going to run. Right. So if you have throwing throwing your exception, it's just not going to run. Right. So if you, if it's ignore, then it's not going to run. It's just going to say ignored. Right. So it doesn't matter if you have something good here or something bad. It's always going to say ignored. Right. So if I if I remove it, it's still going to be ignored. And another thing is uh, that you can do is you can also, um, th there's another like way to define tests. So you can go and define like a bunch of tests first, just, just, just their names, right? And then fill out the, the, the actual code. Uh, this, is, this goes by the name of behavior driven testing. So what you might want to do is, it's, it's, not, it's like semantically, it's not really ignoring the test, right? So this is called a pending test. So you basically create a bunch of them and you're going to come back to them later. So what you do is you just say pending over here and then it doesn't matter what, what happens next, it doesn't get executed. Right, so it's gonna, it's basically the same thing as ignoring, but the message is going to be a bit different, right? So ignore and pending, and um, ignoring is going to win, right? So if I copy that, uh, if I copy, if I paste it over here, whoops, if I paste it over here. So if I have ignore and pending at the same time, uh, ignore and uh, pending, then ignore is obviously going to win, right? So this is how it's, it's going to look like. Uh, it's still going to ignore them, it, right? It's not going to it's not going to do this pending thing. All right, let's remove all of them except for the first one. This one test success. So this fun suite it comes with the method called test and ignore and 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 then pending as as you have seen. It also comes with a sort. So if you do a sort true, then the test will pass. If you do a sort false, then the test will fail. Right? Test success actually failed. Right? And what it what it does internally is it just throws a so-called test fail exception. And as I already mentioned, every time an exception is is thrown, the test fails. Now, what you have seen before is something like this, assert set.empty, which is an empty set, right? And that its size is zero. Now, this is obviously true, you know, an empty set, its length or its size is, is, is zero. But let's, let's, let's uh, produce an error. Let's say that it should be one, and it's obviously not one. Look what's going to happen. Obviously, it's going to fail, but also it's going to tell you, hey, an empty set had size zero instead of expected size one. This is crazy. So this is some um, some really uh, advanced Scala stuff that is going behind the scene that is going to analyze this expression. Is going to understand that you know that you're working with sets that you know you know to, to generate this, this error message, right? This is actually kind of cool, uh, but we're actually not going to use it. First, let me fix the um, the assertion, right? So what we can do is we can also mix yet another one. We can use um, mix in with Matchers and what what you usually do in in your project is that you you know you you define your own style you go uh, trade own style and you say okay it extends uh, fun suite uh, with matchers and you know you put this thing in in, in you know in, into a separate file and then uh, instead you're just gonna do that right so in all of your tasks you're just gonna have like extends own style right so in the next file you're just gonna say extends own style we're not gonna do this over here because this is uh, just a tiny project but just to show you how it's usually done okay so matchers uh, they give us this cool DS SL, a domain specific language for defining um, assertions, right? So what we can do is we can say set empty dot size um, should be zero, right? And uh, if it's not zero, so if it's like like this, right? And then it will say zero was not equal to one. Okay, and because uh, because it's a you know in in, in Scala every method uh, you can call like this, it actually reads quite nicely, right? Set empty size should be one, should be zero, and so on. In fact, I just realized that I forgot to show you one thing. Uh, let me actually comment this out. Uh, let's go back to uh, you know regular regular ones. So if you have an assert false, and uh, let's do a print line over here, uh, hello, and then you have an assert true, right? Now obviously the test is going to fail. If you switch them, 
notice that hello is not printed out in this one it actually is printed out okay so uh, essentially you can have multiple assert statements and one one test uh, if you read upon uh, if you read up a little bit about testing then uh, you might find out things like you know there should be only one assertion uh, in, in a test uh, what is meant by that is that there should be one semantic assertion right it doesn't mean that there has to be one you know syntactic thing for the you know one call to the assert uh, method right so for example um, if you put an, an element into a set, then you can make sure that it's you know that it's not empty and also that the size is one. So it's technically like two assertions, but semantically you're testing one thing, right? So that that's absolutely fine. So all I wanted to show you is that you can have multiple assertions, right? So if you have um, true true, then you know the whole test is going to succeed. Okay. Uh, let me remove these and come on this one in again. Actually, let me show you one more thing. Uh, so the thing that we had in the beginning was assert. Um, set dot empty dot size equals zero, right? Let's try not equal zero because before we said equals equals one. Look at the message now. Now set now the message says zero equals zero, right? So it always depends, you know, how you how you write your code uh, if you get a nice error message or not, right? So uh, I believe these ones are a bit more consistent uh, because you can't. Uh, maybe maybe you still can do that. Let's try that. So you can also do should not be should not be zero and yeah it's it, it's a good it's it, it's still good I, I still prefer it. should not be one and this one is true all right so let's go back to to the regular one should be should be zero okay like this now you can go to the uh, Scala test website and uh, you can go to um, uh, using matchers, right? So remember we're, ma we're mixing in this matchers um, thing. And uh, by the way, I just forgot one one thing. Uh, you can actually also mix in uh, must matchers. I think it's like this. And then instead of should, you can use must. It's just you know there are there are a lot of you know preferences going on uh, out there. So some people say okay, test should say what must happen, and some others say what should happen. I prefer the should. No, I just I just get used to it. So uh, I'm gonna use uh, should again. Okay? So it's um should be zero okay so let's go back to the website so if you go to matchers then you can see like all the cool things that you can do with the syntax so you can look at it uh, at your own pace i'm just going to show you um a few, a few a few things okay so the first one is a string so if you have some like hello world then you can say it should include um hell yes hello world includes hell okay and also you can do hello world uh, should not include high right like this okay so notice that we we need uh, you know parentheses over here uh, over here we actually don't need them hold up over here we don't need them right uh, because you know if we if you write it down again then this is actually a method call right and then include I'm sorry include becomes a parameter to should right and then whatever comes back right so this thing this is what we you know what we're calling um, hello, right? So there's nothing in between. Whereas, um, whereas over here, there's nothing in between, which is why we need parentheses. Uh, whereas over here, it's going to be should. We're going to have not like this, and whatever whatever comes back here, we're actually calling dot include on it, right? And then we're passing another parameter, right? So essentially, every time every time you have you know something function call parameter that's fine right so if you have like three things and then if you have like five things seven things nine things and so on it's actually kind of funny right so let me remove this and let me remove that and let's continue with our example uh, so the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, a very a very uh, creepy thing actually uh, called um, set dot empty dot is empty should be true right that's sort of you know that, that makes sense right what you also can do and it's not gonna work for sets but it's gonna work for sequences in a second so what you can say is set empty should be and now you can use a symbol right a symbol like this uh, sublime auto completes the second quote a, a symbol and you can use empty over here right so basically if the set has a function that is called is something then you can you know lowercase the you know the, the letter and, and use it as a symbol so this is not actually this is actually not going to work but i believe this is actually more like a more like a bug in scala test or more like a not necessarily a bug but more like a limitation uh it actually is going to work for sequences all right so if you have sequences then it should work right 
So it should be empty. And you can also say um, sequence of one, two, three uh, should not be empty, which is kind of cool, right? Um, so um, if if this is actually wrong, right? So if we do this, then you get a nice error message, and it's going to say uh, list was empty, or the other way around. If um, you know you have in sequences one to three, and you say that it should be empty, then it's going to say hey list one to three was not empty, right? And by the way, the default um, sequence is a list. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to this to the to the website again. I'm going to scroll up, and we're going to go to running your tests. And there are many ways to run our tests, but we, we're running them from SPT. So if we go to SPT, then um, it actually explains to you that if you go down over here, that you're going to also pass uh, options to Scala test over here. Actually, let me let me maximize that a little bit. OK, so you can, you can do this. So if I copy paste that, and these are the options. So O, which means you know the console output, and D stands for, should be over here, show all durations. And we're also going to use S. Uh, for show um, short sec traces. So if you put this in our build file uh, over here, build file. So if we add this over here like this, uh, then we're going to have uh, S and D, right? So short sec traces and durations, right? So if you reload, reload, and now we run our tests. And actually, let me fix the test first. Um, to this one. Let me just remove that. That was the wrong one. Hold up. Should be, should be empty like this one. All right. So we also see how long it took to run each individual test. So if I just copy paste that over here, let's go like two. So you're going to see multiple tests, and we're going to see the duration for for both of these tests. Okay. So. Um, I already know that we're also going to add another option to this. So we're going to do plus equals instead. So we could just keep like duplicating these lines like this and just, you know, put something else over here, right? But instead, we're just going to do it a bit more um, as it is done in, in actual production uh, code base. Uh, we're just going to define a sequence, you know, because, you know, we're in the playlist for collection. So let's do uh, sequence stuff, right? And the same thing over here. Instead of doing plus equals, we're going to do plus plus equals. And we're going to do sequence over here. And this is going to be our dependency. And um, a bit later, we're going to add yet another one. Okay, so like this, uh, I believe if you reload, it should be fine. I don't think that I made any syntax mistakes. Like this test. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is one of the one of the options is uh, test reports. So we can specify where to generate test reports. So this is this is not the test report that I'm talking about. So if you go here. Right, and I just copy pasted it from my from my um, uh, from my script. Uh, basically, it's the same thing, but yeah, you you say you say h, which stands for HTML, uh, I guess, uh, and you say generate this please into target slash test report. So if we reload this now, if I reload this now, and I run our tests, uh, what's happening? Oh yeah, pack down. I forgot. I forgot. So um, for this HTML, it actually needs uh, yet another uh, dependency, and the dependency is called uh, pack down, which is a deprecated um, uh, package. What it does is so uh, Scala test generates a markdown, and pack down takes this markdown and actually generates HTML. So it's deprecated, but Scala test still uses it. So we're just gonna add it. We're just gonna add it. Uh, I'm not gonna type it because I don't want to waste your time. Uh, so we're also gonna test it. Uh, we're also going to add it only to the test scope. And let me actually do this. And peg down is a Java Java thing. So for J Java uh, libraries, they're not uh, prefixed with you know Java version, right? So it's just peg down, and therefore we need only one of these, right? And um, also, uh, you know, just later for GitHub, let me also include the the links so that you can uh, you know always look them up, and they will also be in, uh, down in the description. So uh, absolutely no worries. Okay, so uh, let's reload and test. Okay, so now if I uh, open another terminal and if I go to dev credit card uh, over there, we're gonna have a tar target folder, right? And over there, we're gonna have a test reports uh, folder, right? Let me actually make this smaller so that it doesn't collide with the other one, right? So test reports because um, over here we specified in target test reports, right? So if you go over there, and type ll, right? Then we see uh, this index.html file. So we just if you just open Firefox and we give it this file, 
Uh, you can also do it manually. You know, you can just go to this folder. You know, if you're in Windows, and just you know start your browser and just open this file. Or you can you can just double click uh, on it like in Windows or Mac. Also, also in Ubuntu, you, you could do that. You see the whole test suite, and if you click on it, you see actually all of these tests. And if one of them was was failing, uh, let's make one of them fail. Um, I don't know. Just throw an exception over here. System error, whatever. Right. And if we go back to our console, uh, not this one, the other one. We run our tests again, and we go back to Firefox. Uh, we reload the page, and now we see, okay, the test suite failed. We click on it. We see, okay, this one failed. We can show the details. We, we see the entire stack trace, which is which is really really cool. The next thing that I'm going to show you is the Artima SuperSafe plugin. Uh, so, um, do we need the browser? Yeah, maybe we'll need the browser later. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still going to close it. So let's uh, let's close it for now. Okay, so we have the console down there. Uh, we can close this one. Okay, so we're back. We're back to normal. Okay, so let's uh, let's run our tests, and let's uh, actually remove the second one, the one that is failing. So everything should be green now. And over here, so uh, what we have is set at empty size should be zero. And if you put not an integer over here, right? So for example, if we put a string over here. Right. Then obviously the test is going to fail, but there is actually a way to catch it at compile time. So there is this compiler plugin which can be added to SPT. Uh, so, but it's a Scala compiler plugin, so you don't technically you don't need SPT for it, uh, I believe. Uh, anyway, if you add the Scala compiler plugin, then it will um, sort of reduce the power of the Scala compiler. It will make sure that certain things just don't compile. Uh, so this uh, plugin is proprietary, but it's from the same. Um, people who wrote Scala test. So if you use it together with Scala test, then it goes by the name of the community edition and you can actually benefit from it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it. So for that, we're going to go to our build file and it's not published to the Maven repository, right? Because uh, not only is it not open source, it's also a paid software. So because it's not on Maven Central, we actually need to add a resolver. Uh, we add a resolver over here. Right? And it depends on which Scala version uh, you're using. You might need to add it into the plugins file. Uh, so we're going to add, add it actually to both files, uh, you know, just for the just for the future. Uh, we're going to go to here in the same one where we have a build property. So we're going to go over here. We're going to create a new file. It doesn't matter how we call it. It just has to have the ending of SPT. And usually it's called plugins SPT. So we're going to add it um, there as well. But technically it's uh, it's not necessary. Right. So uh, now we have this resolver, and uh, now uh, in in the plugins, now we actually need to add this plugin. I'm going to copy paste that uh, because I just don't want to you know waste your time. Okay. So now this this is added. So now, if we reload the project, right, and now if you run our test, you will see it should download the the plugin now. Yeah, see, it's downloading the plugin. It's rebuilding the compiler, and now it actually doesn't compile. See, it says it doesn't even compile. So it didn't run the test. It says this is an Artima super safe, super safe thing. Values of type int and string may not be compared for equality with Scala test should be matched or syntax. And if you really want to do it, then there is a way to convince the compiler to actually do this. So let's go back and let's add our zero. Right. Okay, so it obviously doesn't protect you against you know bad values, but it protects you against bad types. So you still can have you know one, and then it's going to say you know then it's going to just fail at at runtime. Okay, right. So there's one last thing that I will show you you know for for the test for the for for the for the build tool for 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 SPT and and so on. But before that, we actually need to to write a few tests. So let's actually write a few tests for our credit card suite. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to rename it to credit card suite. We should have done this a long time ago. Okay, the first uh, test that we're going to uh, have is, and tests should have descriptive names. Uh, we're going to say creating a card uh, without passing any number, any number should generate a valid credit card, right? And the code is going to be credit card is valid, should be. Sure. By the way, if you if you Google stuff about about tests, you might find um, the three A's of testing. And the first A is called arrange, which is basically means arrange your data, arrange your code. It's over here. Then you act, which is the call to this to this function, and then you assert something, right? So three A's of testing, and technically there is also a fourth A of testing called annihilate. So arrange, act, assert. Annihilate, which is the part where you clean up. But annihilation is is, is only used if you have like some some data that you know something you, you set up in a database and then you want to make sure that it's removed and so on, right? So uh, let's just continue. So um, 
Um, by the way, let me show you. Let me show you one thing, one tiny thing. So as I as I mentioned before, right? So you can do credit card dot uh, not dot. You can say it should be valid, right? Remember this rule: everything that is you know starts with an is and so on and so on and so on. So this should actually work, but in this case it's not because we're extending any value. Remember, so if you go to um, if you go to credit card and if we remove this, um, yeah, if we remove this. How we're gonna do this? Uh, we're gonna remove that, and we're going to remove this, right? So if we remove these optimizations, then this code is actually gonna work. So see, as of right now, our test actually passes over here. So this, yeah, this is a limitation in Scala test. And maybe if, if I find some time, I'm gonna check it out. Maybe it's uh, possible to to widen a little bit because basically it, it only works with any refs. And as soon as if you, as, as soon as you have any, it, it starts to complain. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to fix, but maybe it is. Okay, so let me remove that and also let's let's revert that thing in the credit card because I wanna you know uh, I wanna put it on GitHub later. So um, I want it to be as perfect as possible. All right, so the next test that we're going to have is creating a card um, without passing any number uh, should create a card of class credit card dot valid. Okay, and our test is just going to create a credit card, credit card like this should be a credit credit card dot valid right so this is just this thing that is coming from from Scala Tesla you just uh, need to learn right so there's a method called a and it, you can parameterize on a type it doesn't have any parameter list so you don't have to call it like this right so you, if, if you don't know these methods I suggest that you just look them up uh, and if there's nothing that matches your case then you can always fall back to booleans right so you can create a credit card and then you can say as uh, no, is instance of credit card what's happening credit card dot valid should be true like this is sort of like old school always works right uh, it doesn't have to be like super super beautiful the only the you know the, the only cool thing now, there are two cool things about this it, it, it reads nicer and it produces a better um, a better error message right so if it's not if it was actually uh, not like this so for example if you say it should not be um, a credit card valid right then it will say do, 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 do. I thought the error message would be better. In any case, uh, let's go back to this. Also, there's you know if your if your type starts with a with a with a vowel, then you know you can do like proper English and actually do this, and it will still compile, right? So there's there's a and there's also n, um, and so on. there are there are, there are things like to to make sure that the exception is thrown, that exception is not thrown, you know that it's thrown with a message, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, most frameworks have you know cool things for these. Okay, so uh, let's try one more. Uh, let's write okay so creating a card creating a card um, manually manually by passing a valid number should produce a valid card credit card right so the way we're gonna do this we are just gonna get the valid number out of a generated credit card so we're gonna generate card the card we're gonna get the number out and I'm gonna create another card with the same number right because we whoops we we know that it's a valid number right so we're gonna do it like this and then we're just gonna say that is valid uh, should be true and also just to demonstrate this exception thing um, we're also gonna say no exception which is just a method that is defined somewhere in Scala test should be Look, this this reads like English. This is why I like uh, Scala test by credit card valid number as instance of credit card dot valid. So I know that the class is, is actually valid, right? So if I'm casting it into valid, then no exception should be thrown by the, by this code, right? So it says no exception should be thrown by this code, right? So whatever is happening in this code. So if this code throws an exception, then this test will fail which is super, super cool. Okay, so um, as of right now, we're gonna stop writing tests just for a second, and we're gonna go to, back to um, to our build file, right? So I'm um, gonna go back to our build file, and uh, actually we're gonna go back to our, to our plugins file. And what we're going to add is, uh, and I'm going to have a link uh, down in the description, we're gonna have another uh, plugin called SBT coverage. Uh, coverage, which stands probably for Scala coverage. So we're just gonna add it uh, over here, uh, version 151. And if we go back to our build file, 
uh, build file on top, build file like this, build SPT over here. Uh, what we also will do is we're going to uh, generate an, an alias. We're going to generate an alias at command alias. Right. Uh, this alias is going to be test C, and what it will do is something that we're going to write in one minute. So, Scala coverage makes sure that your tests cover all of your production code. So basically, it shows you how much of your production code you covered with your tests. Now, it doesn't mean that if you cover everything that you don't have any bugs, right? But this is again, this is a discussion for another video. It only means that you know at least you covered all the branches and all the statements. So unfortunately, running this thing is a really you know really long command. So we're going to create an alias that will do this for us. So every time you want to see coverage, you actually need to clean your project first. Uh, that so so basically you will need to compile from the very beginning. Then you have to say coverage. Then you actually have to run your tests, and then you have to ask it to create a report. Coverage report. Okay. So now uh, if I if if we reload, reload, and instead of test, we're gonna say test C. It will you know clean the project, and now it's gonna say cleaning directory, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's doing a bunch of things. Uh, waiting for measurement to saying blah, 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 blah. So first of all, it says statement coverage 37.8 uh, and branch coverage 50, uh, 50 50.0, so 50%. Uh, what it also generates are, uh, you know, are those reports, like XML report, HTML report, and so on, and so on, and so on. So if we take this one, which I'm always almost covering with my hand. So if, if I copy that, and if I just open Firefox, I just paste that in. It's a file that is just on my, uh, you know, it's just laying around somewhere on my uh, my hard drive, right? And I'm not sure why I have some rendering issues. Hold up. Yeah, this is how it should look like. So you see this, you know, this report. You can pause, pause the video and, and read all of this. You see like all the classes, classes per package, blah 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 blah. And then you can go into into your, um, you know, individual uh, test. You know, over here you can go into credit card, for example, right? And you see line by line how much is covered and how much is not covered. Right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to keep writing tests, and by the end, uh, I'm going to run this thing, and it should show us 100%. I'm going to leave Firefox open, uh, but I'm going to move it to another workspace like this. Right. Okay. So um, as of right now, I'm not sure. It's, it sort of starts some sort of process. So uh, what I usually do is I kill SPT um, after after I generate those tests. So I start SPT then again, and I just keep uh, you know running normal tests you know without uh, without the whole coverage thing. So let's just keep um, writing our tests. So I'm gonna go to credit card suite, and I'm going to write a test for the to string method. So I'm gonna say credit cards to string uh, method should mention validity like this I'm gonna say credit uh, card um, to string to lowercase should include the word invalid and let's run this right because it's not an not a valid credit card and the other way around actually let me duplicate that uh, so now we're not gonna specify the number and we're going to say should not include in, invalid, right? And we don't need those braces anymore, right? So a valid card should not include the word invalid. Next thing that we're going to do is we're basically going to steal uh, those fake numbers from our main method. We're just going to say all these uh, numbers should be valid, right? And we're going to go to our main method. And remember, we copied uh, these numbers, right? So these more fake numbers like that. It's going to copy them. And then go to our suite, paste them over here. Let's just call them fake numbers. Fake numbers like this. And now at the bottom of our test, we can say all uh, fake uh, numbers. Actually, those are cards. Those are the numbers. Let's say fake cards. Fake cards. Oops. Like this. Fake cards. So all fake cards map to is valid. Right, so this is this is now just a sequence of booleans, right? So all of these booleans should be true, and also the the last one is going to be test. 10k generated numbers should all be valid, okay? And I can still steal the, this from our main method. Um, like this. Oh, let's actually copy that as well. 
fake numbers and I can actually duplicate that go down with it right uh, okay fake fake cars actually there we go All right, and by the way, look, generating 10,000 10, numbers uh, took only just a few milliseconds, right? If we do uh, a million, um, like this, this is a million, uh, it should take about eight seconds probably, so let's just patiently wait. Come on. There we go. That's pretty much eight seconds. Okay, so let's let's go back to uh, ten seconds because one thing about unit test is that they should be small. They should run really really fast. So you shouldn't like this is more like uh, this one is more of an integration test. And again, we're gonna have separate videos about that. This is also like an integration test, right? So basically, test the whole the whole thing. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's see what we have so far. Test C because uh, I haven't uh, I don't have actually any more tests prepared. Uh, there's this one thing that we're probably gonna need to um, to change. Oh wow, this is nowhere near close. Okay, so the first thing is that um, it also um, ran the main, right? So um, there, there's a way to exclude the main from, from code coverage. So we can go to the build and uh, over here, uh, we can say uh, coverage excluded packages, which is only gonna compile if you have this plugin in SPT, right? And we're just gonna give it the class, the class um, name, right? So it's gonna be like this. So we need to reload says discarding one session. See, like this is the thing that I don't really, really show what, what it's doing. I haven't invested that much time into 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 this plugin. So I, I just used to like kill SBT so that I'm sure that, that it doesn't do anything weird. I'm gonna do test C again, which is gonna, you know, redo the whole thing. All right, so right now it says statement coverage uh, 96, we're getting close and branch coverage is 90. So let's go over here. Um, this is still, no, this is the coverage thing. Okay, so let's go back to um, statement list. No, actually, we don't need the statement list. Let's go to all packages. Let's see over here, credit card. Okay, so it should say at the very, very bottom, we did not test this line. So this is why coverage is, you know, is, is super, super important. It shows you actually what you have forgotten to test. This part of the API is going to be impossible to test because if you wanted to test this, we would actually need to inject something into our production code that will cause a bug. So there's no way to test this. And for these cases, what you can do is and uh, I'm super proud actually that I constructed this case to, to, to be able to, to, to show you this. So you can go over here in your production code and you can insert a comment, a comment that will make sure that when coverage runs that it will ignore this line. So it has to start on its own line, right? So it can't start, you know, this comment can't start over here. It has to start, you know, on this on, on its own line, right? It uh, has to be surrounded with dollars and everything caps is going to say coverage hyphen off. Right, and you go duplicate that, and over here it's on again. So it's basically going to ignore this one line. We don't need to reload anything, but we need to do test C, and test C is going to clean everything. Like this is this is one of those things about coverage. You know, you shouldn't run it like all the time, like I'm doing right now. So usually you run your test, you run your test, run your test, and then eventually be like, mm, I think I'm done. Let's let's see what our coverage coverage is doing, and then you you know clean. You know, it takes forever. You go grab a coffee, come back, and then you see that everything is at 100%. So if you reload this, everything is at 100%, everything is green, everything is cool. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tiny little project. The code is going to be on GitHub. Like this video if you did, it helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And most importantly, take care.